when you make gossip type of statements, those are needless comments that do not have to be said. And a lot of times it's wrapped up in a lot of emotion, a lot of bias, and a lot of tainted perspectives that are not actually accurate. But if I'm going to make a judgment because I'm coming from a good place, I'm coming from a place where I want maybe someone to do better at something, I will make an objective judgment. It's needed versus gossip being needless and entangled with emotion. Don't try and completely dispense with the idea of judging somebody. Erase your connotation of what you think judgment means for a second, because when you get to a place of self-love, you're gonna be judging people the same amount, but it's gonna be different. It's not gonna be judgment of, I think I'm better than you. It's gonna be judgment of, I can see where you're at in life. Let's say you're talking shit about somebody. I need to make that judgment of you so I can protect myself from that energy because I'm not obligated to spend time with anybody I don't wanna spend time with because I wanna keep myself in this place of self-love and self-sufficiency. Once you're in that place of self-love, you have to understand you're still gonna be making judgments about people and not for nothing, you need to be way more cognizant and diligent with those judgments of yeah, other people. Yeah. Because if you start spending time with the wrong people, you're gonna bring yourself right back to square one. And it's gonna be real quick and real easy. And so you need to understand where the judgment is and is it a means to an end and what is that end? Are you trying to feel significant from yep. judging someone? That's very different than I need to protect my energy so I love myself mm. judgment. I had an epiphany about literally as I woke up, I think yesterday. And um, did you make that yesterday? I did, yeah. That's I like, made it right after. It was like a couple days ago. I don't know why. Uh, it wasn't. All right. Well, thanks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but yeah, um, so pretty much it's going to be about a little thing a lot of people our age and <laughs> older call tea, right? Also known as gossip, also known as drama, drama, bullshitting, <laughs> bullshitting. Talking, talking shit, talking about insignificant. First world shit. Well, well, <laughs> well, well insignificant sorry, sorry. to you, right? Because to, to sure, some sure, people, sure. to their point, very significant. It like the Kardashians is very, yeah, very, yeah, yeah. But for me, it makes me think about like Manchester United, the soccer team is yeah, very significant yeah, yeah, yeah. to me. Mm. And is that uh, would you? What are your what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that that's T? What are your <laughs> thoughts on, on on like sports teams? Oh yeah, you know I love sports. Yeah, I watch. Patriots, my right. favorite but team. But don't you think that maybe like somebody, let's say, who doesn't care about like a, a girl, a typical mm. girl that doesn't care, it sounds sexist or whatever, the typical girl that maybe follows the Jenners or the Kardashians yeah. and would look at somebody like you following the Patriots saying, yeah. that's the same thing. Mm. For me, it's not because it's psychological, mm. but at the same time, like, is it significant? So what do you mean by psych psychological? I should first So ask. for me, I... Surface level, I haven't done enough thinking into this to actually have a concrete opinion. Yep. But where I stand at the moment is, I think, I would I would say, that it's way worse for your brain to watch reality TV mm -hmm. about the Jenners or the Kardashians okay. or whatever. I gotcha. Than it is for you to watch soccer games or football games. Mm. To an extent, because I have I have people that I know that get. In both sides, like whether you're watching reality TV or sports game, they get just, if not more, depending on which what they're interested in, I think it goes both ways. I think they just get so emotionally invested in this type of stuff, right? And when Why is that a problem? Because it generates, like I was saying, I think... First, we should run the TikTok real quick. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. Just, right, just, right, so, right. just so, just so we have, have a little bit of context. I got um, sidetracked. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. It's, no, we were just, we were just having a little discussion beforehand, okay, and I think okay. um, this is important to have because uh, definitely in in our lives, especially uh, in this first world country, a lot of times we take literally 100 percent of our lives for granted, you know, and we 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 as human beings make problems and uh, just just to have something especially when we live in a, interesting to have our attention especially on. when we live in a society where that's so comfortable. Exactly, we don't exactly. have any world wars. We yep. don't have any of the crazy shit yeah, that most yeah. of our ancestors had mm. to deal with every yeah, day. Exactly. And so now it's time to go out in the real world and we don't have any problems to face, but yep. we're so wired to have problems to face. My God, Becky, what is the tea? What is the tea? I need to know. Tea. Listen guys, the only tea you need to know is to stop caring about the tea. All this drama, all these comments, all these 
different types of things that are attention grabbing, interesting, you gotta let go of, right? It's dictating your reality. This is, you gotta stop living for this stuff, right? Whether it be the bachelorette, whether it be some gossip, whether it be some type of interesting um, information about something that you don't have any control over. This is going to generate emotions and feelings in your life that make you desire this type of feeling continuously. And trust me, I've been in that spot myself where I just, ooh, I'm like, ooh, this is kind of interesting. I wanna, like, I wanna listen to this, right? Like, I want more information. But that desire for that information, if you don't get that information, if you don't get that same feeling every single time, is going to cause dissatisfaction, right? It's going to, to cause I guess you could say a form of suffering in your life, right? You got it. You got to take a step back and realize that this present moment here and now is all you need, right? You don't need the gossip. You don't need that information. You don't need that little like, ooh, I wonder, I wonder what he's wearing today. <laughs> like, you know, you know what I mean? Like that little type of stuff that makes your day feel worth it. You are already whole and complete. You are already enough, right? You don't need this information. You don't need to be a part of this inclusive group of people that know the information, that have the tea. Stop caring about the tea, people. It's dictating your lives and potentially ruining it. So love yourself because I love you. Peace. So what do you, what do you think? The, your speaking was phenomenal there. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I like that a lot. Appreciate it. Good. <clears throat> what do you think? Um, no. I mean, there's a lot you touched on. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah for sure. So for to sure. break it down, it's like... Yeah. The, f the first part where yeah. it's stop it, phrase it the exact way you said it. So the only T that you need to know is to stop caring about the T. Right. And that's, I mean, as, as almost corny and like, yeah, obvious <laughs> as that sounds, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really fucking true. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> because your addiction to information about other people, which your addiction to information about other people when it comes to gossip is only because you feel insignificant. So if you can compare yourself to anyone in any way where you line up better than them, then you want to hear about it because that will reinforce your ego's belief that you're superior to them and that you're more significant than somebody mm. else. But the only reason why you have that desire for your ego to put yourself on this pedestal is because you feel insignificant in your soul. Because if you look at anybody that's actually fulfilled, they don't look at somebody else as if they're better or worse than them. They look at everybody as equals and that you have different habits and, and talents and skills and genetics and, and a different upbringing than me. But that's because they're coming from a place of I'm full. Therefore, once you have no more real insecurities, not fake insecurity, not body positivity, but real self-love, then you're in a place where you don't desire any information to make you feel superior because there's no ego because you are enough and you inherently feel that. Mm, 100% dude and it, <clears throat> it reminded me of uh just how when people aren't <clears throat> when people aren't a fight <laughs> <laughs> it's like a goddamn dog it's like <laughs> oh <laughs> I'm taking a swig of my shit water <laughs> Okay. Right. Um, when when you brought up how um, how if someone's not a part of like that inclusive group, right? They feel insignificant, right? They don't have that information that See, others but what do you, have. What do you mean by inclusive group? So the people that have the tea, right? Like they have the information that others want, right? And so this, I'll use a very very good concrete example here. I remember um one time i was uh i don't know i was think i think i was going to some big high school event and i was like the only guy in the car um and like all the other there's like a whole bunch of other girls and they were just talking shit about like every single girl like so much information right and i remember like after that day i went back to my i went back to my uh my friend and um i was like dude you'll never believe what i found out about huh. everybody right so i felt significant because i had this information right and so when i brought it to my other friend right and so i'm not saying my friend was in the same spot as me but prior to that when i used to in high school look at like the i guess you'd say the popular group right which is an, an illusion right there's no such thing as popularity um in that type of context right in that hierarchy but when i used to see people in that popular group um, 
I was like, oh my God, they have all this type of information so that you, I okay, want. That right? makes sense. So yeah, you yeah. think that the key to get into a group, mm. psychologically, because yeah. there are no groups like you just yeah, said, yeah, yeah. but the key to getting into that group is to have the same access to information that they do. Mm. Yep, so if yep. you know the same things that they do, yep. and in this case, it's playing out in terms of gossip, yep. then you'll feel included. Yep. And that feeling of inclusivity is what you're after, not a feeling of significance. I think, or do you think it's kind of both? It, I think it's kind of both. Yeah, okay. I don't think it's this or that. Um, but I think that's I, a really interesting. I think you yeah, you are after that information, but through that information, like that's what breathes that significance, right? Okay. You're like, because now you feel included, right? Now you feel accepted. Now you feel like you have something to say to people, right? right like right, you, right. you can, for for someone like like you were saying before, that's very secure with themselves. That's very um has that self love, right? Has habits and behaviors that naturally breed the self love. They don't necessarily need that information, right? But for someone that's insecure, right? Um, when it, when they come up into conversations with people or interactions, they have this lack within themselves, right? They're they're not satisfied, um, in terms of who they are and what they could just genuinely talk about with people right so when they when they have these types of conversations when they have different interactions with people and they have this piece of information that mm. people want to see right it 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 just uh, it just appears like gold to them right it just appears like this oh my god i <laughs> i know this and they don't know it right and right. and like when i say it to them it it just breathes like this this kind of um, it's just interesting, right? It's attention grabbing. And at least for me, like, um, when it comes to things like that, they're, they're placing their attention on things, on information that appears a lot more significant than it actually is. Right. Yeah. Because in reality of that spectrum, that information really doesn't mean so, shit. Right. So do you think if everybody hypothetically yeah. loved themselves, yeah. true self-love, not yeah. the bullshit self-love, that they would have they would now be in a place where they don't desire the information because a, they don't have a need to feel significant. Kind of my psychological idea behind yeah, it. Yep. But b, they don't have a need to be in some in group mm -hmm. because they're self sufficient. So they don't care yep. if they're desired by a specific popular group of people mm -hmm. or whatever. Do you think that that would apply or no? What was the question? Do you think that every if everybody had self love that they wouldn't feel the need to feel significant or feel the need um, to be in that? I think I think they would have the feeling initially, but they would know how to handle it. They would know how to respond to it in such a manner where I still, like like I said in the video, like I still have that natural interest and desire to be like, ooh, like I want to I want to know about that, right? <laughs> but but here's the thing, when it comes up again right continuously they won't get sucked in to the conversation they won't yeah, yeah, yeah. get sucked into um advocating and supporting and having an interaction um that is based on gossip like they, they won't contribute to the discussion right maybe they will but if they do they'll do it in a manner that kind of stays neutral right yeah, and yeah, they'll yeah. be aware of the entire interaction itself right and so i think when like that feeling will still come up right because I mean, I mean, unless you completely just, I don't know, at least I'm basing this on personal experience, right? And what I've seen with other people, um, just like when interesting information comes up and you're just like, Ooh, I want to know more about that. Mm -hmm. You'll naturally have that tendency to want to participate in the discussion. Right. And right. do you think that there's a, like an evolutionary aspect to uh, it? Cause for me, like this is a very mm -hmm. low low resolution idea and I'm like, yeah. I'm just thinking about it as you're speaking. Yeah. What it keeps bringing me back to is like, if, let's say back in caveman times or whatever, like if you didn't know all the tea about everybody else, you were much more likely to die because you didn't know who you could trust and who you couldn't. Yeah. So if somebody finds out that, oh, well, he backstabbed him and stole his yeah. piece of meat and so yeah. then he died, like you're not going to trust him and therefore yeah. that guy's going to die see, off. You know, see, the thing is with that type of scenario, that – type of information is based on like very high circumstances right so like that i understand but it, i'm but i'm but the society is different now which is why i'm saying is it's yeah, yeah. it's it could be maybe i'm explaining wrong i think no no no, no, no i get what you're saying i get what you're saying because i think we as human beings naturally have the tendency to have our attention be focused on something that's interesting right that right but why do you like, because be, besides the in-group insignificance do you think because i because it feels so wired. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, those no, two no, things, I think it is like, definitely wired. like in group yeah, yeah, yeah. insignificance, mm -hmm. like if that was it, hypothetically, yeah. it would be cured by 
self-love. Or maybe it's because you don't actually reach a point of 100% self-love. Mm. Maybe. Because do you think a monk is ever, ever, ever going to be interested in, in gossip? I don't think he will be. That's what yeah, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, is like, I know. Yeah, I get what you're saying. So I think um, it might actually just be true self-love. Yeah, no, yeah. Because when you stay in and society and yeah. you, like, for someone like you, even though you're super, like, grounded and, and love yourself, yeah, yeah. you still are in public. You're still doing stuff. You're still hanging out with other people yeah, you yeah. work with mm -hmm. because you're not as isolated as, in this case, a monk. Mm -hmm. So maybe that... Of, it's impossible for you to reach the same level of self-love mm. through your pure environment and who you're surrounded by than a monk would be. So you're going to be much more susceptible to that gossip, a.k.a. that desire to feel significant than a monk would be because his levels of self-love are higher. But that's just – does that make sense? No, 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 for sure. And I think this, this applies in my own case too because if you go from senior year of high school when – I had like I was in the car with all those girls, and then I brought the it, all this information back. I was like, "Dude, you'll never believe what I found out." You know, compared to now, like I don't place my attention on that nearly as much. Why? Because I've developed yeah. such habits that ooh, I have my priorities straight now. Right before I my pri okay, when I say straight, I mean my priorities are different now. I think that's a better way of saying it. My priorities before were based on getting closer to certain people that would give me this type of information, right? Right, but as a feeling of significance in an in-group? Like yeah, that's yeah. The, that's what you're actually after? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But as time went on, right, I began to detach from that process of getting closer to people, right? Because I wanted... Because I wanted, yep, I wanted to appear more significant, right? But as I had that self-love, right, and I developed habits and behaviors that um, satisfied my own standards and high quality of life, I naturally detached from that, I guess you could say, that those type of behaviors, right, right. that brought in, okay. I get, um, that brought in like that type of like you 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 don't care about being significant anymore right that's what i was just about you to don't say. care yeah. about this interesting information if anything that information might be intriguing for a second but then like we were talking about before the podcast you'll get this feeling of cringe you'll right. get you'll this get, feeling of you disgust go back to center because you have a new norm yeah exactly, so for me the exactly. way it immediately it, it it comes across as to me yeah. is <clears throat> if you have a desire yep. for gossip if you feel attracted to to gossip, yeah. it's because you don't have self-love, yep. right? And so the the manifestation of you want gossip in your life isn't what you should be placing your focus on. What you should be placing your focus on is how to develop the habits to live a better lifestyle, mm. to in turn love yourself. Mm. Because once you love yourself, you're not going to feel a desire to feel significant and feel a part of the popular group. And then as a byproduct of that, you won't be attracted to that gossip, yeah. right? But it all comes down to the habits you have in your life. Mm. Because if you develop the habits that are going to tell you that you love yourself and you're going to feel yeah. that you love yourself, you're not going to have a desire to be yeah. a part of the popular group. Mm. You're not going to have the desire to feel more significant than others and gossip and talk shit about other yeah. people because you feel like you're enough. Mm. And, only, and only when you're in that perspective of, I am enough, will you not have that need to feel better than others yeah. or to feel a part of the group that mm. feels better than others? So, again, significance. Yeah, and it, you, the stop caring about the T is, it can be a realization, right? It can be like someone sees that TikTok video and it's just like, wow, what am I, like, I, I care way too much about, like, sport games. I care way too much about, you know, bachelorette drama, gossip between friends, whatever. Like, they can definitely see that but i think if someone does i think the better route um potentially um is they no no because maybe they do have to use this like a video or a message from a friend as a signpost to get them on the right track right mm -hmm. and i think if they're able to start developing these habits right that caring about the t right will go beyond just the belief of like oh stop caring about the tea. you'll actually have actions that represent that you do not care about the tea anymore the yeah. only tea you need is to stop caring about the tea right it always brings me back to the same part which is like we're talking like 
all these leaves of the tree are dead. Yeah. And you're, we, we, we look at these leaves of the tree. In this case, this, this example is, is gossip, yeah. right? But the leaf on the complete opposite side of the tree, if one leaf is here, you have the, the, the root of the tree here, and then you have another... <laughs> you, you have a root of the tree here. <laughs> Jesus. If, it was the first thing I thought of. It's me that, too. Yeah, yeah. I saw a look at your face. I was like, I was jerking <laughs> off that me. tree. Anyways, that's not if you ha- if you have a tree with a bunch of these dead leaves, yeah. right? And this dead leaf is the example of you are attracted to that gossip. On the opposite side of the tree, you have another dead leaf that is, I don't have a positive image of my body, right? You wouldn't think that those two things are related. But the moment you water that tree consistently for a couple of months, both those leaves are going to be green and healthy. But why, right? The metaphor I'm using here is once you develop the habits of self-love, exercise, things to align spiritually, things to make your relationships better, things to make your career and your finances better, once you do all of those things and develop those habits, as a byproduct, you're not going to be attracted to gossip Mm -hmm. because you love yourself. You're not going to have a poor body image, Uh because you love yourself, yep. but it comes to watering the tree, mm-hmm. AKA the habits. Yep. So stop focusing on the leaves, right? You don't necessarily need to try and think your way out of yep. don't gossip, don't gossip, don't gossip, don't yeah, gossip. Yeah, yeah. You won't want the gossip yeah. once you develop the habits. Yep. You won't have the poor self image mm-hmm. once you develop the habits. Yep. So that's what, that's the perspective I'm coming from is yep. like a lot of times people will see these things and like are so focused on the gossip, not thinking deeper of, Oh, it's the habits. Mm. I need to focus on writing down what I need to do every morning yeah. and doing those things. Yeah. I'm here to tell you, if you start making your bed every morning and start working every morning, start working every morning. If you make your bed every morning and start working out every day, you're not going to want to gossip. Mm. If you do that every day, yeah. if you do those things and then add habits and then add habits and continue yeah. to treat yourself like you love mm-hmm. yourself, you won't feel the need to to gossip, you won't feel the need to participate in any of these poor behaviors yeah. or have these byproducts of feeling shitty about yourself because you love yourself. Yeah, because you're occupying your time with things that are beneficial for you, right? And oh, dude, this is this is I can't believe we didn't touch on this. Like you, you are occupying your time with things that are truly serving you, right? Nice. Because if I just spew some shit about Jason, like, fuck Jason, his eyebrows. I love your eyebrows, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> like, some dumb shit about his eyebrows, right? Like, that's what I'm occupying my time with, right? And every single time I do that, right, to maybe feel better about myself, feel significant, right? and Or talk some shit about, like, just a friend of mine or just, like, spew some shit online or whatever, right? I'm not saying I do this at all, but... That's how I'm occupying my time, right? But as you start to develop new habits and behaviors, you start to shift how you occupy your time. And what do you know? Through that, you're, you're, like we said before, those behaviors and those habits begin to change. And I think the perfect, the, the standard that people should, should be striving to is the monk, right? I'm not saying you got to become a monk, but get to a point where th- when someone brings up a comment, maybe at work or in a conversation, of like, oh, like it's talking shit about a friend or like the bachelorette. That kind of information appears so neutral to you, like mm. any other sentence in a conversation, right? And so even if yeah. you do, like me, have that net, like we, like we touched on before, this is a natural, at least we believe, this is a natural biological urge of human beings to get yeah. interested in. But you will not, on top of that, place your attention on it and then yeah. through your mind engulf yourself into it so much more. And yeah. you'll actually be aware of the conversation and what's going on. You'll identify what's gossip, what's not. Right, and right. you'll allow yourself to overcome that initial urge that you can't control and respond right. with a response that is beneficial to you and where you're going in life. Right. To me, immediately what I think about is once I started making my life better and started learning to love myself through the habits I was building, every time somebody would talk shit about somebody else, which was something I did a lot of. Yeah. Like a lot of. Because I felt insignificant. Once I was in the place where I loved myself, when I heard people talking shit about other people... It was like a siren was going off in my head. Yeah. Get the fuck away from this conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This feels like shit yeah. because this is bringing you back to your root of where you grew up. Like root's a bad word, but this is bringing you back to your conditioned past of 
this is how I used to be. And it led me to a terrible fucking yeah. life, yeah. a terrible feeling, a terrible existence. Somebody yeah. that wasn't contributing to society, somebody yeah. that doesn't love himself. Yeah. And when you contribute to these conversations, it's you're, you're killing the tree. Yeah. You're putting it in shitty soil. Yeah. You're not watering it. Mm -hmm. You're not giving it the sunlight it needs. It's the same thing for your life. When you find yourself constantly indulging in conversations and in interactions in, in, in any situation that you know is self-harmful, you're in a place where you're bringing yourself back to your old conditioning and you're completely being counterproductive to the process that you need to take place in if you want to get to the place of self-love. Mm. Yeah, and... One last thing I think we can wrap up on with uh, this little uh, – unless you have anything else you wanted to say. Um, not just, the entire episode. We'll, <laughs> yeah, no, no. we'll go to another point after this. Um, it's when, when – okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to make a big point here because I think a lot of people will see this and be like, oh, I should never say anything bad. I should never make a judgment that's negative or I should never say anything that's positive, right, in a sense of uh, like maybe something being interesting or something like that. When – when you make like gossip type of statements, when you make type of statements like that, those are needless comments that do not have to be said. And a lot of times it's wrapped up in a lot of emotion, right? A lot of bias and a lot of um, tainted perspectives that are not actually accurate. But if I'm going to make a judgment because I, I'm coming from a good place, I'm coming from a place where I want maybe someone to do better at something, right? I will make an objective judgment, right? And it's it's needed, right? Versus gossip being needless and entangled with emotion. This objective statement is it's something that you believe objectively, like it might, might not be true, maybe not, but you objectively believe this is what needs to happen, right? And you make an objective statement about Jason's eyebrows, right? <laughs> like, yeah. like, or something about, yeah, no, yeah. once again, I love your eyebrows. I'm just using that as an example. I'm not insecure, <laughs> really. I'm incredibly insecure. Actually, it's the thing I get the most compliments on physically. Dude, I think Besides my height, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and my massive physical stature. Show him! Show him! Oh, Dude, that, this is not as advertised. If this was like my Tinder profile... You'd be like, damn, he's ripped. And then you'd see me in person and be like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> oh, shit. Nice. Oh, nice. yeah, dude. Um, but, yeah, when you – you, it's okay to make, I guess, un quote, unquote, negative judgments, right, that might be perceived as negative. But they're ultimately yeah. used towards an end, and they're needed. They're objective regardless of emotion, and they're not right, needless. Right, right. Yeah. I, I just want to finish with one thing because that makes me immediately think of, like, don't – try and completely dispense with the idea of judging somebody. Yeah. Erase your connotation of what you think judgment means for a second. Because when you get to a place of self-love, you're going to be judging people the same amount, but it's going to be different. It's not going to be judgment of, I think I'm better than you. It's going to be judgment of, I can see where you're at in life. Yeah. You're not happy, and it's clear because, it, let's say, you're talking shit about somebody. I need to make that judgment of you so I can protect myself from that energy. Because I'm not obligated to spend time with anybody I don't want to spend time with because I want to keep myself in this place of self-love and self-sufficiency. Jesus. And so once you're in that place of self-love, you have to understand you're still going to be making judgments about people. And not for nothing, you need to be way more cognizant and diligent yep, yep. with those judgments of yeah, other people. Yeah. Because if you start spending time with the wrong people, you're going to bring yourself right back to square one. Yeah. And it's going to be real quick and real easy. Yeah. And so you need to understand that... it where the judgment is and what means is it a means to an end and what is that end yep. are you trying to feel significant from yep. judging someone that's very different than i need to protect my energy so i love myself mm -hmm. judgment but they're both judgment you need to look at why and where you're going after absolutely it. protect your peace facts <laughs> cal and i went off camera for a second we had a quick conversation but you no know, pretty much how the common notion that when people look at you and see your success. Not saying you individually, but people right. with I'm success. I'm not a good example, but yeah. No, people, no, 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 no. You are, you are a great example, but you're someone that's – you're on the rise right now, right? Yeah, and yeah. you have a lot to speak about this. Me too, I feel. Um, when people look at people that are successful and they see all the achievements that they have, particularly on social media or you know, just maybe someone in their individual life, they're like, oh my god, how are they getting these all these opportunities, right? Nice. They just got it by luck. So is it by luck? Yeah. Okay. So exactly. So that's the thing that I that – I'm. I was touching on because recently I, I could say this. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a guy named David Meltzer. He's 
very, very big influencer, yeah. extremely wealthy, and is also extremely successful in his personal life, right? And so he reached his his marketing team reached out to me, and they and now I have a conversation set up with them for next week, and yeah. I'm gonna start making content for him here and there. But like, yeah, the, this situation is gonna be a massive turning point for my career. Yeah, massive, right? It's not surprising. It's not surprising to me. And I don't, I don't say that out of ego. I say that because I need people to understand that I've been working my ass off on myself for like four and a half years. Yeah. What was it? Like going into junior? Yeah. So probably like four, four and a half years. Yeah. Because in high school is when I started making my bed, started exercising every single day, started taking care of my mental health. Mm -hmm. Started taking care of my relationships. Started doing all these things consistently every fucking day for years. Consistently. And so I gradually put myself in a position to where luck was going to come to me. Mm. Right? And people really don't get that. Right? It's like to, to say that it was all luck that this came into my position is complete bullshit. Right, Because if I didn't post five times a day every day on TikTok for the past year, I wouldn't be in the position where they'd even know my name. Mm. So I put myself in a position of I work my ass off to get into the seat where luck is going to fall into my lap. Mm. But I have to work my ass off to get into that seat. Yeah. That's my point. Mm. Is like If you want luck, the universe, God to bless you with these situations that the successful people just get from luck, you need to put yourself in the seat to where luck is going to fall into your lap. Yeah. I get it. It's coming from a white male in a privileged <laughs> society. I get it. Yeah. I'm not saying I don't have these advantages, and I acknowledge it. But that doesn't – my point is, is if somebody with your same ethnicity, your same background, your same monetary upbringing, somebody with similar or worse circumstances got themselves into a seat where luck can fall into their lap, then you don't have anything to say anymore. Mm. Yeah. You don't. Because yeah. I acknowledge that I come from a, a very biased perspective and a perspective that can't understand certain things. I get it. But if there's somebody else in your shoes that has put themselves in that spot, then there's no... I just don't want to hear it anymore. Yeah. Unless you're actually putting in proportionally the same amount of work that that person has, I, I don't want to hear it anymore. Yeah. Because there's nothing for you to say because you don't have any there's nothing reliable there's no reliable you, argument you can you, make with that you've done everything in your control to for fate to be on your side absolutely right and what people got to understand is right there is such thing as external factors right we are not in control of everything right but you individually have developed habits and behaviors that have allowed i guess you could say the universe right to reflect that back to you right, right? and of course well, if someone did the same amount of work with you, same amount of followers on TikTok, same amount of habits, X, Y, and Z, would would someone reach out to them? Maybe not, right? Well, could someone get lucky and blow up on TikTok that doesn't have the habits and behaviors? Or I say blow up on TikTok. Have uh, like the same opportunities as you? Absolutely, right? But which one do you think is more likely to have that type of thing reflect back to them? Exactly. Someone that has the That's habits the or someone that doesn't? That's the point. Is yeah. people don't, it's like, it's cute to fucking say it. That it just fell into my lap because I worked hard. But you're not with me every single second that I'm spending obsessing about self-education. Yeah. Obsessing about becoming the best life coach ever. If you could look at my cumulative hours on YouTube, reading, and self-education, mm -hmm. it's fucking sickening. <laughs> it's sickening. Yeah. Nobody's willing to do that. Yeah. Nobody is. Yeah. And I don't say that to toot my own horn, but it's like, dude, I didn't get in this position for luck to fall into my lap by accident. Yep. It's grueling, mm -hmm. and most people aren't willing to do it, yeah. which is fine. But don't tell me that it's all luck when successful people are successful. Yeah. Don't tell me that it's all just God cursing you and blessing them because it's a load of shit because <laughs> everybody has 24 hours in their own day, and you do too. Mm -hmm. Jeff Bezos and I have the same 24 hours. He makes billions because he does different things with his 24 hours. And he gets himself into positions where luck is going to fall into his lap, and I'm sure it has, and it definitely has for you to own a company like Amazon. But for him, for you to even remotely suggest that he's just there because he's a white male, yeah, because he got yeah. lucky with genetics, yeah. is insane. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Because if you spend 24 hours with him, you wouldn't say that. Yeah. You would never say yeah. that. He's a, he's a one in a billion story, yeah. but he's one in a billion. Right. <laughs> There's only so many Jeff Bezos walking and, the world. And, and, right? and, and to his case, yeah. and to this case, yeah. I wanted to remind people that we're just looking at money. Of course. Because it, I mean, th- dude, I, I really want to, I need to clip this up too and put it yeah. on my TikTok because there's a, there's a point in the Je- in the Joe Rogan podcast where he's talking to Elon Musk, where Elon Musk start talking about his quality of life. Mm. Joe Rogan talks about it. He's like, he's like, hey, man, like, I heard you're selling all your stuff. You're selling all your houses, all your cars, all your cool stuff. <clears throat> and he's like, yeah, I don't own any fancy clothes anymore. No fancy cars. I don't have all these houses. I don't live lavishly. I don't go on crazy vacations. I just kind of just live this normal life, I have enough to get make my basic needs, but he's the richest man in the world. And it's like, why is he doing that? And it's because he is in a spot, and I can't word for word paraphrase this, but he's just not happy. Mm. How are you going to tell me that that guy is successful? Yeah. It's just fucking money. Yeah. Like, it's just fucking money. Yeah. For you to think that somebody like Jeff Bezos or somebody like Elon Musk is in a place where they should be happy because of how fucking wealthy they are. Mm. They're just fucking wealthy. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, in terms of money. Yeah. It, it's like, for, for you to look at that and say, okay, now I need to work really hard for luck to fall into my place so I can get rich. That's even crazier mm-hmm. than for you to, to stay in, in a spot where you're just going to complain. Mm-hmm. That's, for me, that's even crazier. Because the reason why I'm doing this the reason why I'm putting in a dis- disproportionate amount of work than most people is because, A, it brings me incredible amounts of fulfillment and happiness and long-term happiness, not just a high. But B, I want to change the fucking world. Yeah, it's like, not your goal. There's, there's plenty on my plate to drive me forward in a manner where I will be happy and fulfilled. And I am happy and fulfilled in the process, yep. which is what I'm getting at is like, it's not about the money and not for nothing. I would rather do this. I'd rather be doing exactly what I'm doing. Have nobody know my name, have nobody know my face, not be the center of attention, not get paid a single dime and just survive. Yeah. Maybe live in a one bedroom apartment in a shitty downtown area mm. Yeah, dude. and do what I'm doing and make the impact that I'm making and going, and I'm going to continue to make yeah. then to get paid billions of dollars and have Elon Musk's, yeah. Wealth. And I think I think something very interesting to point out here is your success isn't dictated by the amount of money you have, the amount of followers you have. Your success is dictated by the habits that you have internally, right? Because so look at someone, for example, Jay. I love right? that. I love right? that. Look at someone like Jay, for example, right? We, we like we have probably nearly like I'm not, not obviously we're two different people, two different habits, but broadly speaking, we have very similar habits, right? Absolutely. He may, he has been making so I've been making content on YouTube for probably four plus years now, right? I have I have one more subscriber than I do videos. All right, so, <laughs> so <laughs> this man has been on not not like not knocking you or anything like that, yeah. right? Not at all. And this these are two different pra- platforms. There's a lot here. It's maybe I'm simplifying it, but you've been on TikTok for almost a year now, right? Yeah, and you have had exponential amount of growth right you're to be fair you're creating different type of content right you're it is true right um but broadly speaking once again i've been on youtube i have one more i have 328 videos and i have 329 subscribers right i'm not saying that each and every single one of those videos is the most high quality or whatever you know like that was obviously improvements that i could make but if someone was to look at that and say like oh oh see it's based on luck it makes sense right I mean, to be fair, like, yeah, there there is some luck type of factors that allow individuals to be more successful oh, yeah. than others, right? To be oh, yeah. fair. But if we just look at success from a habits point of view, we're both successful, right? So it's not necessarily about the followers, the amount of views you're getting, the amount of subscribers you have. No, it's just about those habits and you really, whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing, doesn't have to be content creation. It could be fishing. It could be, I'm against fishing, (laughs) but it could be, you know, any type of activity that you want to do, career, whatever, right? As long as you are in the process, right? Of going out fishing daily, right? Right. right. Maybe you're not catching as many fish. 
but you're still going out and fishing as much as you can. And right. I just thought about this the other day too. This kid in the gym who was like not probably like half my size, bench is 225. And I saw that in the gym. Yeah. Look at his face right now. That was my face. But then I was like, I I should only compare myself to myself, exactly. right? Two different cases. Exactly. He's in a different spot. He's probably genetically really strong, right? But I'm still doing as good as I can, right? I'm still pushing this weight as much as I possibly can. I might not be getting the same results as them, but at the end of the day, the success that you really need to think about and how you need to define it is based on how much you're trying and how much effort you're putting in within your control. Yeah, I like that a lot. I love that. Because people get into this mindset that's so one-dimensional. Because it, it would be a lot easier if life was whoever has the most money <laughs> is the happiest, most fulfilled, and lives the best life. Yeah. It would be really easy to understand because then you'd say, hey, do your best to destroy everybody else, manipulate everybody else, <laughs> and to make as much money as possible because you're going to have the best quality of life. Life's not one-dimensional like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Sorry. Yeah. It's just not. For you to say the only thing that matters are your finances, taking out your family relationships, your intimate relationships, your spirituality, your mental health, your physical health, all of these things yeah. that are so important yeah. is ludicrous. Yeah. Because a lot of those things are going to be way more of a priority than money. Sometimes finances yeah. and money, making money is going to be more important than others. People get it twisted all the time. But a lot of times it's not. Yeah. A lot of times it's not, which is the point I'm getting at here. Because if you actually understand that, that life isn't one-dimensional with money, which you would feel if you spent enough time working on yourself, you won't be after it anymore. What you're going to be after is a, a high quality of life where simultaneously your happiness and joy and fulfillment brings other people happiness, joy, and fulfillment. Yeah, and it's not about the fame. It's not about the money. It's not about other people seeing it. You're just doing it in itself, right? right? And just byproduct right. of that is happiness. Which is exactly right. And success, whatever right. you want to call right. it. Because like... And, right now, and luck and opportunities coming in your way. 100%. Yeah. But it's like people don't understand. It's like, for me, this sounds very cocky and egotistical. This is what I feel in my soul because the law of attraction, however you want to call it, when I'm manifesting in my life, is a lot of monetary wealth and a lot of, and a decent amount of fame pretty soon. Yeah. Like, yeah. maybe we can clip this up. I'm telling you, man. And, it's kind of like, and, like and, I feel and, that for you too, dude. <laughs> Like, like when you told me yesterday that response that you had with the marketing, yeah. like, because I, I think I told you this, like the initial response that I'm not going to say directly and specifically what you said, but the initial response that I thought you would have given would have been like, was the response that I was thinking. But to give a response that is so much like, oh, I don't care about the views. I don't care about the followers. I'm just here to add value to your life and whatever you give me in return in terms of like conversation, you know, getting to know them and the like, that's all I'm here for. Right. And I knew from that response alone that I was like, damn, this man knows what's up. Like he's, he's Appreciate on it. it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I just, I, I felt that intuitively too. Like yeah. that's, I was like, wow. Like you just, you're just so on, maybe this, you could say fate, God, the law of the universe. Like you, you always like, you may have not thought about that. That wasn't a calculated action that you've been thinking about for weeks, right? You just always have the right decision. You always make the right decision at the right time and under the right circumstances. And I'm not saying always. I'm not saying with no, that. But when it mean. comes to turning points like this that dictate your career yeah. and these opportunities that you fall in your, into your lap, if you're on the right path and you you're you're going towards what you want to manifest and you're attracting that into your life you're gonna make the right decisions yeah. no matter not me not no matter what yeah, but no. oftentimes i appreciate that dude yeah means a lot what, what was i saying before um oh this is it's it's gonna sound egotistical but i believe in my in my eyes i'm attracting this this wealth and fame or whatever yeah but it's ironic because the only reason why I'm attracting it is because I don't give a fuck about it. I don't care about the wealth yeah, and the fame. Yeah. I want enough money for me to have my own house yeah. and food on the table. And enough for me and my future family. Nice van. <laughs> if, nice bus, the conscious bus. I want enough to get by, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. That's what I want selfishly. Yeah. Any penny after that, 
it's nice. Maybe I can have a, a, a lavish lifestyle. Maybe I can go on super yeah. cool vacations. Nice additions for sure. But I don't give a fuck about that. I don't give a fuck about the fame. Not only that, I, I really don't want it. I'm not looking forward to it. I've listened to plenty and plenty and plenty of hours of people who are in the position where I'm, I'm attracting. And that's a, always comes up as a downside of it, of not being able to go out to the store by yourself and, and be at peace. Of not being able to do certain things and be happy. It sounds like, oh, yeah, well, well, so we get it. Famous Jason or future famous Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speak for yourself. I want to be famous. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. You think so? We'll see. Like, yeah. I think I've developed enough wisdom from the people that are in that, are in that position of, I, hmm. I, at first, I would be completely lying. Like, when I hit 60,000 followers, that was a big turning point for me just wow. mentally. And I was like, nah, this is going to be sick. But something so interesting just came up in my that? mind. What's that? People that are in that spot, like that have very little people that follow <clears> them, <throat> and they look at someone that has all this attention on them, right? Has all this significance, right? They're insecure in themselves, right? They're viewing that from that spot. But from someone that is at a spot, particularly, I guess you could say in self-growth, right? that is secure with themselves, they don't want the fame, right? Even though they have the fame. Mm. Isn't that interesting? For me, it's like, it keeps, I no, I, I said this a bunch of times, I think yeah. too. It shows up in the, in the universe so often of the chase, right? Yeah. Cause when I was growing up just chasing girls, it's <laughs> always like that. You chase, you chase, you chase, you chase, you yeah, chase, yeah, yeah. you talk to her all day, you Snapchat her all day, you flirt with her, compliment her all day. But the second you stop giving her that attention, Fucking cat and mouse switch roles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now she's chasing after you, yeah. right? The second you don't want it anymore, they want you. But it shows up in so yeah. many things. Mm. Like this is a perfect example. But and it's it, this is tangibly easier to understand. You're not attracting what you want. You're attracting who you are, and that's that's the law <laughs> of attraction, Whoa! right there. <laughs> that's nuts. Yeah. You're, attra- you, you're not you, attracting what you want. You attract what you are. You attract that frequency. Yeah. And that's... Fuck. And you're... You, yeah, I got to quote Ralph Smart with that. Like that, you're not attracting what you want. You're attracting what you are. And that's... that's crazy. You're... Yes. But I don't... Here's the thing. Like, why are you... Like, so obviously you don't want the fame. And it doesn't like w- take wants out of it. But why are you attracting fame? If you... Because like, I guess you offer certain types of characteristics that... People want I think to fame because you're, you're okay. Go, go ahead. I think fame is a byproduct yep. of me attracting what I want. Okay, is to change people's lives. Yep, yep. And when I change enough people's lives, aka add enough value to enough people, people are flocked to you. Yep. So the fame is a byproduct. Yeah, I have t- two hundred seventy some thousand followers as a byproduct of me adding enough value. Yep. Right. I don't. I don't. And again, it sounds. In the beginning, I really, I loved the followers. It felt really nice. In the beginning, I loved all the followers and it felt really cool. It felt really significant, yeah, yeah. especially when it was at parties and people were like, 60K. Now, like, 60K, like, the fuck? Yeah. But, like, <laughs> but like th- it felt so amazing, mm. but it was only because it was new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. They got used to it. The feelings of, it's, like, honest to God, honest to God, it's the reverse now. Like, I'm, I, you've had enough social interaction with me where there's neutral parties and when the first thing people learn about me is the fact that I I'm TikTok famous. It's the, it's the it's my least favorite thing. Yeah, it's my least favorite yeah, thing yeah, because yeah. the second like it's hard for everybody else to notice in a group setting. But the second I'm one on one with somebody and they know that I'm TikTok famous and the life coach and motivational guy, wherever the fuck they they want to think, they immediately most people change their behavior. Most people immediately change their behavior to some version of themselves that they wished existed. When in reality, all I want is a real conversation with somebody. Yeah, yeah. I don't care if we're talking about self-improvement. Yeah. We could talk about your cute dog. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I'd much rather have a real conversation about your cute dog than to talk about, well, I've been trying to work out. Like, I didn't even ask. <laughs> yeah. I don't want that conversation. Yeah. I want the real you. It's so inauthentic. Right? Yeah. It's, but it comes back to the point of, like, you think that you want this shit. You think that you want it. You don't. Yeah. I learned that all it was was the newness and the excitement and the temporary feelings of significance that I liked temporarily, but now I don't like it anymore. And all it's going to do is scale up. Yep. So it's going to make my life harder. And not for nothing, people who are famous, their lives are under a microscope. They can't say one bad thing. 
They can't say one stupid thing. They can't do one. They can't make one mistake. There's a microscope on them. There's that too. But my point is, is like, it's a byproduct. Yep. And I'm willing to deal with that as fucking egotistical as people are going to take that. I'm willing to deal with that if it means that I'm going to continue on the mission that I have. Absolutely. That's that's a fireplace the end. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that has been episode 56 of the Conscious Cast. I'm your host, Cal, along with my other boy, Mr. Jason Scalora. This is also the end of episode number 18, 18. of the Jason Scalora <laughs> Show. More importantly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, guys, make sure you uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Where can they find you, my man? You're on my channel. <laughs> what other places can they find you? Uh, only fans. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's Jason Sklora plus uh, uh, content. No, Jason Sklora, Jason Sklora, J A S O N S C A L O R A, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Spotify, YouTube. The like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Love yourself because I love you. Stay handsome and peace. peace.